title is here, logarithmic resolution. Uh, in fact, it will be uh, what I'll talk about is an algorithm of uh, resolution of singularities of logarithmic varieties. This is a sort of logarithmic modification of classical algorithm. So half of my talk will be about classical and half will be about the modification. Let me start with introduction. I'll formulate two, uh, one of my results and also give some motivation. So, introduction. So first of all, we always uh, fix characteristic to be zero. The only case where classical is known. So we all also only work here, but it is over Q. We always work over Q. In addition, by var k, I'll denote uh, the category of integral, or maybe locally, maybe the joint union. It doesn't really matter. Uh, integral uh, varieties over a field k of characteristic zero. Uh, so for simplicity, I uh, I'll only discuss this case. And by Varke log, so varieties that is a finite type of uh, k which are local integral. Okay. And uh, Varke log are the same guys. Uh, with fs log structure over uh, k and uh, trivial log structure <coughs> k star and two. Okay. so classical uh, resolution deals with the resolution of these things canonical Pandora and so on as I'll formulate and logarithmic will deal with this okay now uh, let me uh, define uh, maybe uh, first, uh, theorem classical, theorem 1, which is a classical functoral resolution, it says the following, uh, for any z uh, in bar k, for any uh, such variety, uh, there exists a modification to this proper variational uh, map z rs to z I'll denote this map f of z such that uh, z rs is smooth so this is indeed a, a resolution in a classical sense proper variation <coughs> and the source is smooth and in addition, this is uh, uh, about punctuality, uh, f of z uh, is a functorial or comp compatible functorial for smooth, for all smooth maps uh, y to z. That is, f of y is just pullback of f of z. So, uh, functoriality, uh, maybe just to mention a few names, I'm not right on the board, but this was proved without functoriality, just existence for any z separately uh, by Hironak in 64. When it was done canonically, but it is at least compatible with all automorphisms, canonical was done by uh, sort of, I think in the beginning of the 90s, by Gerson Mirman and Bill Mayor. And later, Vladarchik in 2000 actually showed that, in fact, this is even better. This is functorial false smooth morphisms. Uh, there are many different descriptions of this algorithm, but it's always the same algorithm <coughs> so far. Yeah, and uh, in fact, uh, the algorithm I'll talk about, it also applies to uh, the case when log structure is trivial, so it also recovers this. And it gives up in you. So I think in a sense I, it's I remember from some references some time ago that the, the, the algorithms in the 90s, like there was Villa Mayo first, and it was not exactly the same. That is, there are different steps in some they are, they are absolutely minor, but if you have something in the parts, you can do them in, uh, a little bit in different order, or you can be not sure, but it is okay, and you can do it twice or thrice instead of once, and we, this is more or less with only difference. So, so to a large extent, it's the same, the same, the same algorithm with the same engine, the same invariance. And, and also in Sinas, I think, and with the Mayo paper, 
Yeah, okay. Good. Okay, let's let's discuss yeah. it in questions. Yeah, after. Okay. And now uh, <coughs> theorem one log uh, logarithmic modification. This is by joint project uh, with Abramovich and Vladarchik. And everything I'm talking uh, <coughs> here is uh, in the framework of this joint project. And uh, <coughs> it says the following. Uh, for any z in uh, logarithmic, there exists a modification. Uh, z res to z, I'll denote it f logarithmic of z, a logarithmic uh, algorithm, such that uh, the origin is log smooth and uh, f of y equals f of z product with y over z product in the fs category so this is not just pullback, it is fs pullback we are working here uh, for any log smooth y goes to z and this log smooth functionality is much stronger than classical one for example we can extract roots of exceptional uh, divisors that is we can cover branched covers branched over uh, exceptional divisor and it's still a Kummer cover it's log smooth so we get compatibility with this so the main strength of this result is that uh, it goes for Log smooth. Okay. Good. And what uh, do you mean by the modification? It's uh, just on the level of modification. Uh, it's no restriction on log, log structure. Just modification on the level of. But I will. <coughs> it's just modification on level of underlying uh, varieties. But, but, but your yeah. condition of locally integral is not stable under the general uh, local models of log smooth things because you. You can have something uh, uh, which becomes, at least for normal thing, usually is the same. But for just uh, locally integral, if you take tensor Z P Z Q, it's not necessarily. So for e even just extension of the field of, of scalars doesn't preserve locally integral. So it's I don't know if it preserve it presents a problem in the. It is definitely not a problem. In fact, our theorem is a little bit more general. I just I don't want to go to equidimensional and so on, just locally. Uh, just just let, let, let me keep it. Uh, yeah, I, I allow for myself to cheat a little bit at two stages, yeah. And uh, the main cheating in this theorem is not what uh, authors is saying. Uh, the main cheating is that, uh, in fact, the rest is what we call a toroidal orbifold. That is, um, it is a dilemma for stack with finite diagonalizable uh, inertia. So, to get this stronger from reality, we are forced to go to much more uh, wide category. Uh, and and uh, as far as we understand, uh, there is no way to get full from reality without passing to stacks. At least we, we have no idea how to do it, and we suspect it's probably it's impossible. Uh, okay, now one more remark is that uh, this map, ZRS, to Z is an isomorphism over the log smooth locus of Z. So if I'm given Z rest on to Z and here, here I have Z log smooth uh, subskin where all the subskin where this guy is log smooth then actually I'll get isomorphism. If 
bug is it, this immediately follows from contrariety because first of all uh, this morphism should in, induce resolution of z log smooth and z log smooth is log smooth over a point resolution of point can be only a point so just I have no choices contrariety immediately implies that I am not touching the whole locus where the situation is already resolved uh, ok <coughs> Uh, good. Now, uh, maybe I'll just say one word about motivation. <coughs> uh, uh, our uh, motivation is to resolve morphisms. Uh, let's denote them uh, Z to B by modifying both. That is, we would like to get to find modifications of the base and of the source so that this map is log smooth for large enough for appropriate for large enough log structure on B prime and the appropriate log structure on Z. Now, uh, it's known that uh, just what's usually called semi-stable is impossible if the base is uh, of dimension <coughs> 2 and more and the relative dimension is 2 and more but semi-stability is a natural thing to expect that it's possible and uh, we, uh, in fact uh, such a theorem is known uh, in non-canonical folk way uh, it was first proved by Bramish Caro for varieties and uh, in a work on Travaux de Gaber with Luke we improved it to quasi excellent schemes of characteristic zero, or this large class of quasi excellent schemes, but it's not factorial. And because of that, it modifies the whole generic fiber, even, uh, it can modify generic fiber even if generic fiber is smooth. So, this weak version of resolution of morphism does not imply some stable deduction and uh, uh, over evolution ring. And uh, uh, one of our motivations was to prove some stable reduction of general Gerber space when residue characteristic is zero. And uh, the only hope which I, I, I see is to prove uh, factorial resolution of morphisms, and uh, it, it must be factorial for log smooth. It, it must have stronger factoriality than classical one. And uh, actually, the algorithm which we discovered now should be the generic fiber. What's, what's going on in hypothetical relative algorithm over the generic fiber? Of Z over uh, point. So what is the non-factorial thing? You, you are thinking about just no, not alteration but modification. Modification, yes. I okay. Uh, let me. Uh, I, I just give motivation. I, I maybe I'll say one word, but you'll never see it again. Yeah, it was just for to motivate. The point is that uh, we, we resolve indeed by modifications of both. We allow any modification. I don't care much to be. We allow large enough modification of V. And it, uh, after, after large enough modification, it should be just uh, depend on, uh, on pullback of Z in a log smooth factorial way. Okay, I will yeah. proceed. <coughs> Good, so far with introduction, now let's go to uh, classical methods. So now I'll tell about Hironaka's approach and uh, developed by uh, all pe other people I mentioned. So two classical methods. Okay. So let's start with uh, principalization. Uh, so Hironaka uh, reduces question of resolution uh, to be following um, <coughs> to be following question so uh, I'll just say I, uh, okay maybe I'll just say the words the idea is as follows uh, first of all we want to prove something factorial so it's enough to construct our algorithm locally because of canonicity it will glue automatically locally this Z can be embedded into a smooth ambient space and uh, up to eternal morphisms, this embedding only depends on the dimension of the ambient manifold. So in principle, there is not much uh, choices here. 
So uh, it's more or less safe to assume that we are given a canonical embedding into something smooth ambient manifold and we would like to work on this smooth manifold. In such case we can uh, work with uh, Z or we can work with uh, uh, so embed Z into X. This is a manifold. That is just, uh, by this I mean smooth. Something smooth. And work with the ideal which defines Z inside the structure. So, uh, <coughs> and we'll uh, want to achieve something which is called principalization of this I. Now, let me give a few definitions. So, first definition uh, boundary. on X is a strict normal crossing divisor E inside X. So even if we start with empty boundary, it will appear after blowing up when we'll start to blow up X. This is very crucial for Theronacus method. Second, we say that uh, inside X, a closed subscheme has simple normal crossing with uh, E if uh, uh, if uh, there exist uh, locally there exist coordinates T1 up to Tn at the point such that V is given by vanishing of T1 up to some number Tr so in particular it is smooth and E is also given by uh, coordinates, but maybe some different coordinates. Maybe a few of them from here and a few of them not from here. So E is given by vanishing of Ti1 times Ti2 Ti's. Okay, so uh, namely, uh, this is very simple. We can just pick up local coordinates so that all our data is given as coordinate, uh, as linear planes <coughs> with respect to this coordinate. Uh, good, and uh, <coughs> another definition, uh, we say that uh, I admissible blow up is the following uh, datum, x prime e prime i prime going to x e i, this is just formal notation, I don't want, I don't have time to define category of triples, so this for us it will be just for notation where x prime is blow up of x along some v v has simple normal crossings with the boundary we start with this, so we are only allowed yeah, admissibility means that we are only allowed to blow up something with normal crossing and in addition and in addition, uh, v, of, uh, v is contained in the vanishing locus of I. And also, we only allowed to modify the locus where I is non-trivial. Uh, e prime <coughs> uh, equals to, let me denote this map to x by n. E prime equals to pre-image of the old boundary, we call this old component, union with pre-image of V. This is new component. And I prime is just pull back of I. So the idea is just pull back. Uh, now, uh, exercise. X prime is smooth, a manifold, and E prime is a boundary. Uh, just because uh, our definition immediately allows to go to local coordinates, you just compute everything locally and that's it. Okay.
Okay, now theorem 2, principalization. Says that for any uh, such a triple <coughs> x e i, there exists. A sequence of admissible blow ups, I'll denote it x n e n i n such that uh, this guy is sort of result. What do I mean result? It means we call it i n is invertible. And monomial. That is, vanishing locus of I n is contained in E n. So after this procedure, we manage to make the ideal to be just a product of few uh, components of E n with some multiplicities. Okay, and uh, now. Maybe just remark why this theorem <coughs> is stronger than theorem 1. Uh, <coughs> so if z is vanishing locus of i in this situation, and we start with empty boundary, then let zn into the empty set goes to z, to zn minus 1, and so on, to z, sequence of strict transforms. I claim that the total strict transform is empty. Why? Because the pullback of uh, i is supported on the exceptional boundary, so it necessarily means that, and we start with this empty boundary. So it means that uh, uh, at some stage, strict transform was killed. And then take maximum i such that the i is not empty. Uh, easy to see. I will not go to detail, but it's really easy. But in such case, the i is just the i i center. And hence, the i has simple normal crossings with the i. And this implies that first of all, the i is smooth, but even more, it implies that the restriction of the i into the i is bounded, is, is simple normal crossing device. So, in a sense, this theorem uh, implicitly gives indication that you are not just resolving Z, you are resolving a logarithmic scheme. You, you solve strong the problem, you resolve logarithmic scheme ZI and restriction of the boundary. So, even in classical situation, there is some flavor of logarithmic uh, things, and in other, maybe at this stage, I'll say uh, the question what the boundary is. So usually, at least when I started to deal with resolution, I thought it's just uh, some nice sub-scheme. And it's not good to think about this as a sub-scheme. Because the reality is wrong. There's no map from EN to empty. To E which is empty. So this is not, uh, these morphisms are not morphisms of pairs. If we want to view this pantorally, we should think of E as a log structure. We should consider the log structure associated with uh, the simple normal crossing divisor, and then indeed we have such a map from between logarithmic schemes, and the reality of the ideal is uh, direct. Okay, good. <coughs> uh, now, uh, ah, maybe, yeah, I'll just say it without, uh, without uh, writing on the board. Moreover, uh, we can a little bit, it, it was not uh, written anyway, but one can prove a little bit stronger result. Instead of resolving Z with empty log structure, you can consider Z 
with the Dilling Faltin's log structure. Log structure whose monoids are uh, free. Any such uh, log scheme can be embedded by strict closed immersion into some pair XE where X is smooth and E is simple normal crossing device. In such case, actually, you get a strengthening of theory 1 to log schemes with Dilling Faltin's uh, log structure. Uh, so it was a very natural question also if uh, the classical algorithm, which in fact resolves the Linfartian's log schemes, can be extended to the algorithm which works with general log schemes at cost of uh, working here with uh, general log smooth log, log varieties. And this is indeed what's done in, in our algorithm. So this is another motivation, sort of absolutely orthogonal to the first I started with, to uh, construct logarithmic. Extension of this algorithm, or modification of this algorithm. Good. Uh, now, next topic is uh, order reduction. <coughs> okay, so main invariant. I stated this a little bit differently, but again, I allowed myself to cheat a little bit. Uh, order of i, uh, which is <coughs> uh, which is just a minimum of uh, all f inside uh, the scope of i at x. Uh, ex excuse me, minimum of order f at x, where f belongs to the stock of i at x. And order of a function on a manifold is just uh, the order of minimal uh, um, non-vanishing term in Taylor series, for example. <coughs> so okay. what did you write? Uh, main invariant f at f? What is after of main Of f. Invariant? Is order of <coughs> i at x. What is f? f is uh, the algorithm. Let me say, ah, okay, okay. of the algorithm, okay? Okay, I didn't just do it. Okay. Okay, now uh, uh, let's give a definition. Uh, marked or, or, or maybe weighted. I would definitely prefer weighted, but uh, people coined uh, you know, the word mark, so now it's always said marked ideal. It's just ID where I is ideal and D is a number which is larger than zero. And uh, <coughs> it will be just formal combination of it. But so, so I don't pretend to give any uh, deep meaning to this. Uh, but I will consider a singular locus of such guy as all points in uh, the vanishing locus of I such that uh, the order of i at x is at, at least d. So we would like to reduce d, so essentially that we look at uh, places where the order is at least some number and uh, formal will work in such a way. And uh, in addition, we say that a blow up uh, let's say, an admissible uh, <coughs> such guy is called an ID admissible blow up if uh, V is contained 
an ID singular. That is everywhere where we blow up, the order is at least D, and F is I admissible in the all sense. That is, we blow up the multiplicity at least D, and uh, the center has simple normal crosses with the boundary. Okay. <coughs> And moreover, we define transform for a such f. We define transform i prime, which is smarter than uh, what we have done before. Before we just took pullback, but now I say let's take pullback and let's divide it by this power of the new exceptional divisor. What is I take ideal of v? Pull it back. This is the ideal of the new exceptional divisor, and take it to minus d. So, is here there is an e a boundary or not in the huh? marked idea? In the definition of marked idea. In the definition of marked ideal. There is no. Ah, there is. There is no d. There is no d. It, 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 uh, okay. It, uh, e, e is not. Is not a. Uh, Ah, but the, the in admissibility, I require to be simple normal crossing with the boundary. Yeah, when I say that okay. it is I admissible, okay. it means that it's simple normal crossing with the boundary. Okay. okay, so uh, such a thing is defined only because of the condition that my center is inside D multiple locus. It's very easy again. Simple exercise, check that this is defined. That we can divide by this point. <coughs> okay. And then uh, theorem 3, uh, it's called order reduction of mark ideals, and it says this following. It says that uh, any mark ideal X E I D possess a sequence. Uh, of D admissible blow ups. I'll denote them X prime E prime E prime D, but it's a sequence. Yeah? It's not a single one, it's a sequence, and each time we transform ideal by such a root. Such that uh, this guy is a result. Its order is small than D. Uh, Again, uh, as in theorem 1 or theorem 2, uh, this sequence should be functorial. I will not spell this out, but it's natural functoriality for arbitrary smooth morphisms between initial data. And uh, maybe I'll just mention that. Theorem 2 is just theorem 3 for d equal 1. So theorem 2 is just particular case. <coughs> and uh, uh, it turns out that for inductive reasons, it's much, much, much more convenient to prove uh, theorem. OK. <coughs> now, in algorithmic setting, it will uh, get to some details, it will be the same stuff. We'll have theorem 1 logarithmic, theorem 2 logarithmic, and theorem 3 logarithmic. So here x is smooth? Always. It's a manifold. Ah, okay. It's a manifold, is a boundary, i is any ideal, and uh, d is any number. After reduction of theorem 1 to theorem 2, we only work with smooth things and ideals inside them. We don't see any non-smooth geometry inside. Okay. Uh, all singularities are encoded in the ideal, which is just algebraic uh, work. So if the ideal is zero, you just blow up everything and get the empty set. Yes, 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 and uh, in induction, this sometimes this happens. So it can't happen that the order, uh, if you ask it now, then yeah, it can't happen that the order is infinity for ideal zero, and uh, indeed, uh, 
In such case, you just use blow up everything. And in logarithmic setting, we'll have what infinity not only for zero, it will be more interesting. <laughs> but okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, good. Uh, now, uh, next. Uh, uh, so let me explain a little bit how one proves theorem frame. So we might if d equals yes. equal one, then i prime is the pre image of i, or but you each time you subtract one copy of exceptional divisor. Okay. And uh, you want in the end to get to uh, empty guy. Okay. If d is one, then resolving it means just that its locus is empty. Okay. So by subtracting each time just one copy of exceptional divisor, you in the end manage to completely resolve it. And uh, obviously this implies theorem 2 because it means that your pullback of your initial ideal becomes just union of exception. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so maximum contact. And induction on the dimension. Uh, okay, so uh, what I said so far actually is characteristic free. This is an indication that it's not that deep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but maximal contact is the first notion which will really be. Uh, okay, so uh, main miracle uh, is that, uh, let me, maybe I'll say it as follows. Main miracle is that in the maximal order case, it is the case when order of i at any point x is less or equal d. There is a reduction to small dimension. And it goes as follows. Uh, the problem of resolving i in d is equivalent to the problem of resolving uh, ideal c of i, called coefficient ideal, restricted to h called maximal contact hypersurface and the other is de facto. Uh, so uh, the induction on the mention runs as follows, we replace our data by some other data and any sequence which resolves the new data resolves also the old data and vice versa. So the problem is sort of equivalent, we encode everything which we had about the original question into a question which lives in dimension one less. After that, we can run induction. And this is what Iranaka did on idealistic exponent. This is uh, uh, idealistic <coughs> exponent. It's more about definition of Mark ideal. Okay. Uh, this is okay. But anyway, idea uh, maximum contact was formalized by Giro. Oh, okay. But ideas were in Hironaka, but you know, it, it took a lot of time to refine them and to understand what is real engine, self-contained engine. Yeah. And it turned out that there is an odd reduction of Mark ideals is the minimal self-contained block which can uh, prove itself by induction. And all the rest was sort of unnecessary in the original Fronaka's project. But okay, okay, anyway. <coughs> now, main example. Just to illustrate how this works. Uh, so let's assume that i is just given by t to some power d plus a1 uh, t d minus 1, uh, sorry, a2 t d minus 2 plus a d where t is t1 third coordinate and a i actually depends on t2 up to t yeah. on the other coordinates yeah? for example locally we can write some Taylor uh, series which gives something like this so let's assume that we are given such situation yes. just particular case of order of this and then uh, the maximum contact is just vanish on locus of t and coefficient ideal is just the ideal generated by a2 d factorial over 2 a d d factorial over d so it's just generated by coefficients but in weighted way we should take each of them with correct way 
And it's more or less clear that the weight of this guy should be 2 and the weight of this guy should be d. So we weight them approximately. And uh, I'll just uh, show one thing. I claim that id singular, it is the, play, the points where the uh, multiplicity is d, is the same as c of i restricted on 2h uh, d factorial singular. That is, the order of this guy is d, if and only if the order of this guy is at least 2, the order of next guy is at least 3, and the order of this guy is at least d. And this precisely means what is written here. So, at least, uh, equality of initial sing singular log, lo lots is clear. So, uh, uh, id admissible blow up is any blow up whose centralized here is the same as blow up which is admissible with respect to new data. Now, it's much more difficult, but possible, to prove that this miracle persists after any admissible blow-up. So, after first blow-up, again, we'll have equality of singular lots of transforms and so on. <coughs> and you can also ask, what, where, where is A1? So, the answer is that because of characteristic zero, I don't need A1. I can always get rid of A1. And this is the case why I can take this. If uh, not reveal A1 completely... Uh, <clears throat> okay. Good. Uh, now let me say uh, um, a few words about uh, general case. Yeah. Now what I wrote now is sort of very coordinate dependent, and uh, I would like to construct something canonical, something coordinate independent. So this is achieved to large extent by derivations. So one considers D just ideal of derivations on X over K. Yeah, is generated by local is generated by DT1, DTN. Okay. And uh, one defines D of I to be equal, uh, let me say, D of ideal generated by, let me let me say I is generated by A1 at M, then D of I is generated by f1 at n dt1 of f1 dt1 of n dt2 and so on so uh, uh, derivation of ideal is generated by the ideal itself and all derivations of elements inside it <coughs> and then we can iterate and divide uh, iterated derivation of it uh, good and uh, when uh, we can encode almost all basic uh, uh, tools of the algorithm which I described so far by use of derivations. So it goes as follows. First of all, order of i at the point x is just minimal number d such that the this derivation of i x is trivial. So derivation just reduces order by one. It's a very simple exercise in local coordinates. Uh, okay. Two. Uh, maximum contact is any h which is v of t where order of t is one. That is, this is a really smooth guy. T is a coordinate. And T is contained in D minus first uh, derivation. So we know that D minus first derivation has order 1. Yeah, because order reduces by 1 each time. And uh, so it contains elements of order 1. And these are naturally, also this is very intuitive, but such an H has maximal contact with our initial problem. It's as close to initial problem as possible. And three. Uh, coefficient ideal is just weighted sum of derivations of i to power d factorial over d minus i. Yeah? So it's just weighted sum of derivations. Okay, now I managed to 
defined order in coordinate independent way. I managed to define coefficient ideal in coordinate independent way. I have a choice of t here. And this choice is really a headache, and the only real issue to prove independence of the construction is independence of maximal contour. And we, we, this really this was a, an issue, and it's solved in a few ways, but no simple way. So, in a sense, this is maybe one of main technical uh, problems in constructing our work. Uh, okay, good. Uh, um, <coughs> I think uh, I'll. Okay, maybe just one uh, remark uh, complication. What are the complications of uh, this method? At least as I see them, yeah? Uh, because of time uh, restrictions, I... Uh, you'll have to believe me. I, I didn't give enough details that you, you, you'll feel it. But. Uh, so, uh, first of all, complication one is that uh, E can be non-transversal. H. In such case, uh, I cannot restrict my problem to H because restriction of E to H is not a boundary. Uh, to solve this, one actually, first of all, takes care of the, of the old boundary. New boundary will not pose a problem. Uh, it will be always transversal to H, but old boundary is a, uh, is a problem, and one actually solves, uh, first of all, resolves I, the order of I, reduces order of I, uh, at places where uh, there is a maximal multiplicity of the old boundary. So there is a secondary invariant, already in Hironaka's paper, uh, multiplicity of the old boundary. And because of this, the invariant uh, of the algorithm looks as d1, s1, d2, s2, and so on, where well, this is because order we start with, the order of i, or maybe order of its non monomial part, and then the number of exception divisors for a point, after that, the order of d, uh, the order of uh, coefficient ideal restricted to uh, maximal contact, and uh, again, the number of components of exception divisor, and so on. <coughs> Good. And second, I'll just say by words, uh, in principle, it would be much better to work with logarithmic derivations. Because all formals, even what happens to derivations after uh, admissible blow up, they're easier for logarithmic derivations and not for usual derivations. There is one point where uh, use of usual derivations is completely critical, and it is for the definition of the order. Uh, our definition of order uh, does not separate uh, coordinates corresponding to exceptional divisors and other coordinates. So we do not separate different uh, logarithmic derivations. They uh, are different with respect to usual coordinates as logarithmic ones. But the other is uh, completely non-sensitive to this. And, uh, in a sense, all combinatorial complications of the classical algorithm, those which I put under the rug, are actually because of uh, this non-separating of two types of variables. Exceptional and non-exceptional. Okay, good. Now let me uh, start uh, <coughs> the logarithmic algebra. Okay. So what is this compli? I didn't understand about this huh? compli about this complication. So if the maximal contact hypersurface is not transversal to the boundary, then I just I can I cannot I cannot use this edge. I can restrict i, but I cannot restrict the boundary. Because I cannot restrict the boundary, I cannot guarantee that uh, the... Uh, I can resolve i with empty boundary on this edge, yes. but it can be non-admissible. Non, non, non it can be non, so, uh, so uh, not simple crossing yes. to h. But if I always blow up also in the maximal multiplicity locus of the boundary, then I automatically uh, have simple normal crossings with the boundary. Okay, okay, let, let me, yeah, 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 I, I, I guess everybody else 
you still have insurance, but... <laughs> I'll explain, I'll, I'll explain you later, but just try it. Okay, good. Uh, now logarithmic count. Consider any uh, log manifold. X, uh, which uh, I'll sometimes maybe write as X and MX, just log smooth right. Or sometimes we can represent it as X E, but this time E is just X minus the triviality locus of the log structure. Okay. Uh, good. In addition, replace d by logarithmic derivations, by d log. And uh, replace order by log order. And so on. So just put log everywhere you can. So let me start with uh, such a procedure. Okay, log order of i on a log manifold is just minimal d, so that logarithmic derivation of uh, this talk of i becomes trivial. So this guy belongs to n and infinity. Yeah, It can be infinite, it may happen, but we never get. But already in classical situation, this was the case for zero ideal and only for zero ideal. Here it can happen more frequently. If you take any uh, monomial, then any log derivation uh, just multiplies it by a number. Yeah? All monomials, they are eigen uh, functions of log derivations. So log order of any monomial is actually infinite. So there are a lot of uh, guys of infinite order, but this will not be a problem. In a sense, this gives us this separation of two types of coordinates. We have usual coordinates of order 1, and we have monomial coordinates, which have infinite order. You should not deal with them at all by use of derivations or by use of uh, the classical invariants. They are completely in combinatorial side of the algorithm. So we'll get com dis distinguishing between combinatorial parts coming from log structure and geometric part, which is <coughs> maximum contact. Okay, well, again, just put here log, and you are done. Uh, coefficient ideal, maybe I'll put here logarithmic coefficient. Again, put here log and you are done. Uh, uh, four. Uh, as I said, uh, this time x is any log manifold. Five. Uh, Uh, okay, I prefer to go to another board. And what about E, the boundary? Uh, boundary is what I uh, wrote there. E is just x minus x3. So log manifold okay. is uh, fs uh, smooth, uh, or what is log manifold? It's yes, fs smooth. All, all, yeah, yes. Log yeah. smooth. Log, log smooth. smooth. Log smooth. Maybe I'll just give uh, uh, six local, uh, let me see, local picture. Uh, 
completion, uh, formal completion uh, looks as follows. It looks as k, you are joining uh, some monoid, and also you are joining t1 up to tn. So we call these guys regular coordinates. They have other one. And we call everything here monomial coordinates. And this time, I don't have any other monomial coordinates. All monomial coordinates are equally good for me. And, uh, for example, my algorithm should be compatible with taking, extracting roots of monomial coordinates. So I have no chance to have any, any reasonable other monomial coordinates. We are just combinatorial part of the picture. <coughs> okay. And... J... V equal vanishing locus of J is... Admissible if J is of the form T1 up to T I, uh, let's say R, comma M1, comma MS, where these guys are just arbitrary monomials. So now we are allowed to blow up any guy of this form. So uh, V of T1, Tn is a log submanifold. And this guy is a, what's uh, is a monoidal uh, separate. <coughs> and uh, uh, no restrictions on monomials. Yeah? So uh, obviously, uh, even if I start with something smooth, after doing such blow up, I immediately get something which is only log smooth, but not smooth. Uh, exercise, uh, again, exercise, check the blow up of X at V is log smooth. Again, a very simple exercise. Uh, but I just only should say separate. Blow up and then separate. Okay. Uh, <coughs> now I'll, <coughs> I, I should go to conclusion, so um, so it is T I1, T I something, not, not T1 J is T1 up to T few T's and then some monomials. Okay, so the indices are not what you want. No, some, some indices, this is R and we, yeah, yeah, indices, okay, yeah, yeah. I want to I R. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yes. Okay, and uh, now, uh, in fact, uh, so uh, we prove theorems uh, 2 log and 3 log with respect to this notion of order and uh, obvious uh, generalization of uh, marked ideals and uh, the, by the same by the same procedure and uh, uh, it even uh, the main invariant is just d1 d2 the n where the i lives inside n and infinity. So the algorithm simplifies. We don't have to separate from the old boundary. Uh, we only have usual uh, uh, passage to maximum contact, and that's it. But we must explain how about uh, plus one more stage, which we call monomial stage, which happens if d is in. Let me just illustrate how this may look like. This may look like if i is generated by functions like mij t to some power j by elements uh, uh, which, for example, in formal completion, look like this. And all these mij are non-invertible. In such case, the order is infinite. Yeah, uh, in this case, just blow up, just blow up.
blow up the ideal generated by MIJ. By binomial coefficients. Okay. Just blow up this guy and make transform with respect. Just, just subtract the exception device. What you get will be ideal of finite order, and after that you can run the usual. So M I J are where are in the here yeah. are, are mono are uh, monomial coefficients of uh, usual coordinates in yeah I I'm I, I'm working in in this yeah so you have six in the monoid ah okay yeah. times uh, powers of the t's yes yes and uh, and you just form ideal of monomials this is the this is in fact this is the Minimal ideal monomial ideal gene containing I. This is invariant definition. Yeah, if you want invariant, you just consider minimal monomial definition containing I, blow it up, and you get finite order. And uh, I'll just say by words, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, we are completely uh, out of time. Uh, the real complication, yeah, which I wanted yeah, 10 minutes to, to talk about, is that uh, sometimes the algorithm insists that you must blow up something like m to 1 over d for admissibility reasons. And because of that, in fact, uh, one such thing appears, you must go to Kummer uh, et al. topology. And uh, in fact, we work not with ideals on what things we work with Kummer uh, ideals. And uh, blow up of such things actually provides stacks. So this is the reason why stacks appear. And I stop here, I think. I guess you can start with the uh, delineation for logarithmic stack from the beginning. Yes, abso absolutely. Uh, yes. Uh, that's, that's correct. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I, I think we formulate in this generality, in generality of the regular order. But to, to formulate first of all the, the, the theorem, it's easier to start with this price. This also, maybe just as a remark, if you start this variety, you can also want to finish this variety, not this step. So after that, you can, there is also a step how to pass back to varieties, but it is less factorial. It's only factorial with respect to saturated uh, log And This is a step. As you have, a, yeah. you have a better statement for saturated morphisms? or I have a statement which says that if you start this variety, you can end this variety. With log, with log smooth variety, and the process will be factorial for saturated log morph. Oh. And it means not for Kuber covers, but, uh, but for. Yeah. Are there more questions? So, in the rising case, you need to introduce the doing of the stuff. In which point you need, you need that? At this point, I need step. Okay. Uh, do I have uh, three, five minutes? Okay, okay. so I'll, I'll try to very, very, very briefly. Yeah. <coughs> so the point is as follows. I, I uh, kept one more condition, condition I know, six, seven, six, admissibility of ID admissibility of V. And this Actually, uh, in, in this case, it's not so clear what should be the condition of admissibility because my center is complicated. I, it contains any monomial. But it turns out that the condition actually is very simple. We just want I to, contain, to be contained in this power of J. This is the correct generalization of Kiranaka's condition where we are blowing up uh, D multiple centers. If this is satisfied, <coughs> then after the transform, I can divide transform of a public of I by this power of public of J. So this is the, the correct condition. Now, in case I apply this monomial stage, for example, uh, <coughs> I want, uh, let's take spec k of n, monomial coordinate, and I have uh, ideal m2. 
For inductive results, it can happen when starting from okay. something innocent, I, I, I have to resolve something like this. In such case, obviously, I would like to blow up M. But J equal M is not admissible. After blowing up such ideal, I cannot divide by M squared. What is admissible is J to 1 half, which is M to 1 half. And then I can blow, blow it up and divide by, by, uh, <laughs> by the square. So here it looks completely as a trick, but if, I, uh, if this happens only on H, and I start it from some X, on X this can be highly non-trivial. Ju just one example which completely illustrates this is as follows. <coughs> Let's take x equals spec of k x m. One coordinate is regular and one is monomial, yeah? So E is vanishing of m. And let's take i equal x square minus m. So in classical, situ and, uh, uh, in classical situation, uh, it's all this one. But log order is two, because m is of infinite order. So, uh, so we'll consider this guy this order two. Uh, now, resolution says that okay, you should go to uh, H, which is k of uh, spec k of m. And then, as I, uh, and uh, you restrict i, and you still have you, you restrict i to H, and you have multiplicity two. So uh, on H, you must blow up m to one half. And on x, you must blow up something like x, comma, x to one half. This is with center you must blow up. Now, how can we understand such a thing? There are two ways. First of all, we can try, say, OK, let's try a trick. Let's try to blow up x squared, comma, m. Problem is that what we get will not be log smooth. Uh, we insert a bad singularity, and it will be very difficult to control as well. So blow up of this guy is not smooth, not log smooth, not log smooth. But instead of this, you can say, okay, my algorithm is pantorial for log smooth covers. So instead of uh, walking this x, <coughs> let's go to y. Just adjoin a root of root of m. Here we can easily blow up, yeah, so let's call this n, and then my ideal is x squared minus n squared. It's very easy to resolve idea x squared minus n squared, just blow up, blow up x comma n. We get y prime. This is z mod 2 cover. So we can now divide this by z mod 2, and that's what we get here. If I just divide as a coarse model space, I get the bad blow up. I describe here. So I cannot divide back uh, with keeping log structure. But I can divide this as uh, a step. This guy is log <coughs> And this is the sort of blow up, what we call Kummer blow up of x and one half. So it is a stack for the log, uh, Kummer log tal topology? No, it's stack for usual topology. It's enough to work with usual topology. We don't have to go. Stacks are, are just conventional stacks. <laughs> <laughs> the ideals are ideals for Kummer tal topology. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing, but uh, again, we wanted to keep everything as simple as possible. So for stacks, it was possible to work only with uh, dealing with yeah, but the, the y to x, the original one, is not, uh, is not uh, the tal, is a tal cumulative, and not usually the tal. So the stack quotient of y by z. Okay, okay. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe we should discuss yeah. it later. Yeah. 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 Question from yeah. Beijing? Yeah. I remember. No questions from Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so then we can move to question from Paris. Yeah. Okay, sure. I, should, I can discuss this yeah. later with him. So. Yeah, this one should, yeah. <laughs> so we can send the speaker again. Okay.